Hey guys, what's going on? Jenko Sports here, bringing you the next episode of our Addicted to Addicts 2015 Football Manager series. Again, apologies, I couldn't quite get this up last night. I tried my best, but by the time I finished commentating on Sim Race, where it was about 20 to 10, and at that time people started getting ready for bed and on their downtime, and I don't think the best way to create squad morale inside the household will be to start screaming profanities at Football Manager and playing the Just Can't Get Enough song so loud that it would actually drown out a jet taking off. But anyway then, we face AFC Bournemouth, let's see what we can do, it's a Capital One Cup so anything can happen, but bear in mind we have, oh look at that, Tal Ben Aim, now a British citizen, oh he'll be over the moon with that one, he'll be celebrating it with his family and invite them over, they'll all go on the London Eye, he'll buy them all an I Heart London t-shirt, they'll go back to Israel and then use it as a dishcloth because they really don't like London. I've got to stop creating adventures for players, haven't I? But yeah, we're facing AFC Bournemouth, Capital One Cup. Haven't been on the best run in all honesty. I mean, we've had some great chances and we could have had a couple of points here and there. But I just feel friend-zoned by this game, to be honest. I mean, every step forward, we take it three steps back. Not anymore, though. Today's the day. I say that, what I actually do with the squad is something quite contrary. I mean, I decided to put out a group of players who don't get regular first-team football. They're normally the ones that sit on a dugout in Twitter, taking selfies with the opposing team manager, complaining on away days that the opposing team's catering is not up to standard and they were one jacket potato short of when they ordered three. But at the end of the day, they've got to get first-team football. If they don't, they'll get mad, they'll start shouting about in press conferences. And I don't want that. I'm an emotional man. I'll just start crying and I'll buy them little teddies for Valentine's Day. I can't promise they're going to get first-team football, but I can promise I'll love them all the same. Anyway, the point is that, I mean, right now we need to rest our first team players because if we're struggling in the league, we need our absolute best starting eleven to get out there and give 110% to get the results when we need them. And we're not even doing that at the moment, to be honest. So to get out and, you know, some of the less talented players, I'd say, is maybe a good way to go. Uh, Tucker Day is the lone striker up front. We've got Harry Osborne at centre-back and Jordan Cousins also making his full debut. And I know he's meant to be really talented anyway, so fingers crossed he can deliver. But I'm not expecting to win this match. I'm not going in here expecting an absolute thunderous victory and that we're all going to go to Wembley and then start a European tour eventually in a couple of years. All I want from this is to maybe have a close game Get out of the Capital One Cup as soon as possible. Focus on the league and make sure that one, I'm not fired by January. Two, I don't burn my toast. And three, that I can stay in the league for another season at least. So we'll see what we can do. I think it's largely dependent on our cup progress. Obviously, the more matches we have to play, the more fatigued everyone gets. And it's not good. But two players making their debut here today. Oh, they'll be on Facebook later, won't they? Put in the photos of their shirt up or their new shoes that Adidas have sent them for free. And now they think they're something special and Lionel Messi. No, you're not. You play for Charlton, not Barca. Anyway. They've got to focus now. I really do hope they are Lionel Messi because we could kind of use that. You can see that Chris Solly, the wing back, performs very defensive duties at the heart of the Charlton defence. He's not at the heart of it, is he? He's on the wing. That's the bit. No, you've got that wrong. Change that. Oh, you wait till I message Miles Jacobson on Twitter later. Oh, he's getting an earful. But now I've got to focus on Bournemouth because, in all seriousness, they're a dangerous team. Obviously, they've got Wilson, they've got Richie. They did take Yan the man from us last season. They're not to be messed with. They mean business and they will literally take you into a dark room and beat you. And then you'll come out with a 9-0 loss. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Let's see what we can do. Two minutes into the matchup. Look at that possession. We've somehow got the ball and we're still losing possession. It's only been three minutes. Wiggins edge of the box. Ball goes into Goodmanson. Oh, get it out already. Get it out. So Johan Berg Goodmanson gets his first goal of the season. We go 1-0 up inside. Oh, what is it with these early goals? First out at 16 seconds. Now it's inside two minutes. We're getting good. We're scoring early. I mean, this could be a good sign. Provided we don't throw it all the way later like we normally do. Hang on, took it out of the box. Oh, that could have been something special. That could have been his first goal for the team in this competition. Yoni Barnes gets absolutely spin kicked there. Gets up. Look at that. That's just fight club stuff, that is. Gets up. Kicks him back again. So if you get knocked down... Get up, kick the guy in the nuts, is what Yoni Barnes is thinking there. And now it's a bit, a bit rough out there, isn't it? Jesus Christ, that's a foul. Has this referee gone onto the pitch with glasses that are blacked out? Right, is he like, is he blind? Has he got some sort of visual impairment? So he needs glasses, right? And instead of taking his reading glasses, he's taking those sh little night things you put on when you can't sleep because your room's too bright, despite the fact it's four in the morning. Right, he's just put them on instead, and he's completely oblivious to what's going on. That's disgraceful. We've got a corner. Jackson wicks it in. Took it down with a head of Tal Ben Aim. <laughs> Ta 
how Ben I am the now British citizen if I do say so myself, dear chap. That was quite exquisite. Oh, there'll be a cup of tea for you later. The finest PG tips in the land. You won't know what that means, Willie. He just wants to go home and have a kebab, bless him. But either way, here we come again. Can we make it 3-0 before the half? Took a day and I don't know what he's doing there, but plays it back to Yoni Bynes. Look at that. Here he comes. The heart of Charlton's defence, apparently. Down to Johan Berg Goodmanson. He makes an absolute pig's ear of it. Calamari on the rebound. It's like Pinball Wizard. He rebounds off a thin air. Get it out! Calamari it scores again. I mean, I don't know what happened the first time. I think he literally got denied by oxygen. But it doesn't matter. We're 3 0 up against Bournemouth. I don't know what's happened. They've got a corner. Start of the second half. Comes whipping in with pace. And that gets cleared out. So Addison chases it all the way back. Bit of pace there by the bold man chasing him. Yoni Bynes up to Harry Arter. Out there. Oh my god, how's he done that? How the hell has he done that? Goal of the century. Stephen Anderson didn't know what was going on. No one knew what was going on. That was brilliant. I mean, I know they've scored and I shouldn't really be praising them, but Jesus Christ, that was good. Hello, here he comes again. Took a Dian. He's got some pace in the box as well. Up to Callum Harriet. Plays it to Johnny Jackson! So now the captain's got on the score sheet. I think everyone wants a little gander, don't they? Johan Berg Goodmanson edge of the box. What a rifle of a grenade that was. And now it goes out for a corner. I mean, we've scored from there before, but not this time. 65 minutes in. Still 4-1 up. The heart of Charlton's defence. Down to you and Berg Goodmanson to get the end. So somehow we're 5-1 up. I'm not exactly sure how. I know there's been a lot of goals in the beta, but I still oh, no, get it in. Oh, Christ. George took a Dian gets a goal, so he's on two today, I think, now. Corner comes in with cheese. Will it get turned into Daryl Lee Dunkers? Yes, it will! <laughs> Absolutely unreal. Yoni Bynes gets a goal. We're 6-1 up. There's been seven goals, so now we do make a substitution. Obviously, you know, a lot of the players giving it, though. Look at the ratings on him. And I don't know what's happened there. It should be a penalty, I think. So, the referee really has left those night goggles on, hasn't he? I mean, that's atrocious. So, it's his scoreline. But, um, I know it's the beta. I know there's been a lot of goals flying about. But, oh, for crying out loud, Harry Alter's almost done it again. And they've hit the side netting. That's what Bournemouth are capable of. Even when they are 6-1 down, they're still firing at you like an absolute cannon. Ball comes in again, head is cleared, and the referee stands away from it. Well done, he doesn't know where the ball is because he's blind, bless him. But here comes Callum Wilson down the side. I mean, I'm not exactly sure what the defence are doing, but oh, well intercepted there, look. Jordan Cousins on his debut looking pretty nifty. Well played. So now Simon Church, the most inconsistent man alive. Is he going to get on the score sheet today? Here comes Laurie Wilson, the emphatic left back, thinking he can get on there maybe, but no, not quite. He's done his best, but it's... Hang on, can he get a ball in again? It's had a clear. We're pushing. We want seven. Johnny Jackson. Back to the bold brigade. Johnny Byers. The heart of Charlton's defence. Chris Solly. Plays into Laurie Wilson. You can feel it. Oh, he's done it! I think you guys must be pretty tired of that song player now. It's happened seven times in one match. Seven times. I haven't scored seven goals all f***ing season. And now, now we're scoring more than Barcelona, Real Madrid and Arsenal. All combined, 24 of them. Since my math is really good there, you know, 11 a team. Three lots of 11 is definitely 24. But they're all playing against Ebb's Fleet United. Oh, what's happened there? Who is Harry Arter? Obviously I know who he is, but why has he got so good? Out of nowhere, the man's been just drinking up the monster energy. And now thinks he's like David Beckham. And I'm not going to lie, he's probably doing a bit better, to be honest. He's absolutely firing them in. Watch out for him in the league. I guarantee you now, he wins 7-2 here. We'll face him in the league and get absolutely dicked 7-2 again. Simon Church! Oh, and look at that, see? Even Simon Church can't get on the score sheet. We win 7-2 and Simon Church can't get on the score sheet. Hang on a minute. We've won 7-2. We're going through to the next round of the Capital One Cup. I'll see you at Wembley, I'll see you at Wembley, I've got an achievement, Huddersfield beat Palace, what, Huddersfield beat Palace? Jesus Christ, what a day this has been, like Sheffield Wednesday beat Middlesbrough, Rochdale beat Bolton, Rochdale beat Bolton, 
But look at that, Charlton demolished Bournemouth. I guess you could say we were born to win. Or not. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, guys. There will be a full 20-minute video with two matches coming up for you a bit later on today. As ever, if you have liked the content, be sure to subscribe. I don't know how so many of you have recently. Uh, 140 subscribers now. That has tickled my pickle, that has. So thank you so much to all of the support recently. I really hope you do enjoy this series. I'll be back with some more Football Manager a bit later on.